Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we're back with the episode of Hobby Side. And on this episode, we're taking us some brand new terrain that our resident terrain wizard, Iron Major, has made for the channel. And as you can see, it's a beautiful set of Nickermunda terrain for the marketplace. So as you guys can see in this video, my friend Iron Major made some amazing terrain once again. Guy is a terrain making mad scientist, making the most epic terrain out of the simplest materials. So in today's video, we're going to showcase his terrain pieces that he made for our marketplace. We'll talk about all the basic little details that he made and uh, go over some of the materials he used to build some of these uh, to build these uh, market stalls, and then of course showcase his handiwork. So with that being said, let's get this video on a roll. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some of the terrain that we're seeing here right, uh, right off the bat. So first of all, Iron Major was actually inspired to actually make this terrain based on the market terrain that we're seeing from Games Workshop. Um, if you guys know, when they created the book of the, out, uh, the out, uh, Outcast, uh, they actually presented a new type of terrain called the Marketplace, and they actually put those that you could actually purchase that miniature from Games Workshop. The only problem, though, of course, is that the terrain is extremely expensive. It's anywhere between $89 to $100 for some of the market stalls that are available. And unfortunately, those market stalls were actually quite flimsy. They weren't actually quite all that big or anything like that, and they're pretty expensive what you're paying for. So I made decide you actually want to go about actually making the terrain that we see here for our marketplace here. He's currently working on another one as well. He's got three of these done so far. He has this one here with the green roof on it. This is a meat market, as you can see. We got some uh, totally uh, suspicious looking meat that's available from the Underhive. We have the Red Rocket Bar and Grill, which is basically this kind of like food stall that we have here, as well as a bar in the background. You guys can see that. We'll go a little bit zoom in here in a second. Take a look at that with the bar that he has, the beer taps. We have this epic sign that he made. This is actually my favorite thing he made. This epic sign that we have that leads to the Red Rocket Bar and Grill. You can just imagine like a bunch of underhivers, you know, getting drunk at the bar and then decide to do a shooting contest, you know, trying to shoot the spaces between the letters, for example, to prove their, you know, how good they are at fighting and shooting at things. And then one of the most coolest pieces we have here is the gun stand. As you can see, it's a gun mark and we got individual pieces of weaponry available for sale as well. And we have a gun cage in the background. It looks really awesome as well. So these look all fantastic. They're absolutely crazy. They're made with really cheap materials. And we're going to talk about each of these stalls one by one. And I think the very first stall we're going to start off with first is the Red Rocket Bar and Grill. So let's talk about the Red Rocket Bar and Grill. So first of all, let's talk about the sign that you see here. This sign, if you guys see here, we just kind of turn a little bit here. It's actually made from a sign board that you see. We did a little bit of video on that, talking about like how you could use old political signs that usually come up and actually use those to create different structures. These make awesome I-beams if you want to make really thin I-beams as well. And these ones actually was used to create this Red Rocket Bar as well and Grill. And then Iron Major actually drew this out and actually painted it and then of course did a lot of battle damage to it as well using a piece of uh, MDF board here on the bottom as the base as well as this piece of styrofoam to act as a brace for the entire sign. We also have these beautiful posters that our major downloaded from the internet and printed those out in order to glue these onto the, to the bases and stuff to add a lot of character to these uh, pillars and things to make them look really cool as well. Now, as you can see here, we also have the bar here and how you pretty much made these was actually pretty interesting. So first of all, it's an MDF board. So let me go pick this up. It's actually put on an MDF stand that he had. Uh, the MDF actually came from me, actually. I used to use these in the bottom of my carrying cases uh, for my armies, and I had a bunch of them left over. So he made the bases out of that. We have styrofoam for the pillars, as you can see, as well as these huge I-beams that you see here. This is actually made out of an old uh, uh, hanger that Iron Major had basically just chopped up. He made the little sign here using uh, some popsicle sticks on that and painted that up himself, as well as this corrugated cardboard here that you use. made the styrofoam for the base and then put corrugated cardboard on top of that and then put popsicle sticks on the top of the bar here and then paint those up in strange colors too. Now the cups he made, he actually made that from plastic rod that he got from Hobby Lobby that he cut to size to make the cups and then of course the plates and things. He made the uh, food you see here uh, out of Mod Podge for the most part as well. And of course if you look on the floor we have this beautiful grating that he used, uh, that's the cross point stitch grating and he used that to create the uh, the actual flooring. Now as for the actual roof here as you can see here, oops, let me pick that up real quick. As for the roof, he actually used paper straws to create the pipes for this because they're easier to paint. And then what he did is he put paper towel that he has soaked and uh, basically dyed it with water as well as acrylic paint. And he actually dyed it using those cheap acrylic paints and just normal paper towel. And then what he did is after it got kind of damp, he then formed it directly onto these uh, roofs to let it dry. So that way it would have this beautiful kind of shape. And then what he decided to do was actually paint it with some uh, 
I believe he said it was a basically just normal PVA glue all over the top of it, just normal Elmer's glue to let it harden. So that way it gets a little bit more surface tension. And then he went about painting it, dry brushing it, and washing in these wild colors to make that look really cool too. And if we go inside of here, so let's go and take a look here inside. He's got these awesome beer can uh, bandit canisters that hold uh, alcoholic beverages. Uh, for those taps, he basically used some kind of vial, I believe. It's like medication or something like that, medicine vials that he used in order to create those. And then the spigots you see here, it was actually made out of some sprue. And then for the little tops of the taps, he used little button snaps that you'd use for like t-shirts and uh, shirts and things for sewing. And then of course the base is made up with just some more corrugated cardboard on top of that. And then the back here, let's go ahead and rotate this behind. So the back here, you actually use old miniature sprue to create the backing here. And of course use some more grading, uh, cross point stitch grading in order to create that kind of industrial look. And of course he just painted it with cheap craft paint using his cheap oil, uh, cheap uh, washes that he uses for black and brown wash to make it look stained up and dirty as well. And as you can see, it's a beautifully done uh, piece of terrain as well. It looks absolutely fantastic with all the details involved. And then over here, we have the grill part here where you basically have a, like an eating area. Once again, using MDF for the table, uh, for the base. And as for the tables themselves, you just piece these pieces of like small little pieces of like wood and stuff that you can buy at like Hobby Lobby, things of that nature. And then if you want to, I got that diamond plate on the top. He actually used cans of cashews. Uh, if you look at when you buy his cashew cans, when you pop the lid on that, they have like a sealant that has like a little bit of a diamond plate foil that kind of seals the, uh, the can of cashews. And he saves those because it looks like diamond plate. And that's what he used for that. And he glued down the plastic rods as well as the food they made with Mosh Podge. The bases, the little uh, benches here are made out of pieces of popsicle stick. Did exactly the same thing over here. I just painted these like really garish rainbow colors on the, uh, on the tabletops to make it look nice. And then these caps over here are actually like the caps from like food caps. From, I, think he, I believe he said like from cartons of egg whites is what he said he used. And then he painted them up, of course and just put those radiation symbols on them and things to make it look like these guys are eating next to barrels of uh, radioactive material, which looks really awesome as well. So this is pretty much how I went about making the bar, uh, Red Rocket Bar and Grill, which looks really fantastic. So now that we're going to talk about the Red Rocket Bar and Grill, let's go ahead and talk about the meat stall. We're going to talk about that one next. So the next piece, train piece we're going to talk about real quick is the meat stall. As you can see, it's this really awesome looking piece of terrain. Looks absolutely fantastic. Kind of similar uh, construction design that we talked earlier with the uh, with the um, with the MDF board and the bases. Uh, a lot of the columns and the walls, for example, are made out of styrofoam or um, insulation foam. As you can see that he cut up and used sand and wood glue to make the bases with the uh, with the dirt and the debris and things. Once again, using uh, uh, the uh, that styrofoam to create the bases for the market stalls. And then he surrounded it with cardboard, uh, corrugated paper and corrugated cardboard to create that look with popsicle sticks for the decking. And once again, the food that he made, he made that out of Mod Podge. I believe he used pieces of toothpick to create the bones for this as well. Um, by the way, don't ask where the meat comes from. It's just a special that's available for you. And then, of course, he made all these really cool-looking posters using bits of wire hanger to make the eye beams, as you can see over here on the top. Once again, using that paper or straw as well as paper towel technique to create the roof. And if you look on the back here as well, he has this awesome grading. This comes from an old computer hard drive, if I remember correctly. Or maybe it was, uh, maybe not a computer hard drive, maybe it was a, uh, a router. I forgot, but it's a piece of uh, computer. It's basically the ventilation plate that's in the back of whatever piece of uh, computer hardware he used to salvage that. Found some old looking, like Blade Runner looking inspired Asian posters to put in the back of this as well. And then I just love the little details like the posters and stuff, like the propaganda posters and the wanted posters. And I really love the roof that he did on this as well. Uh, he used that paper towel technique, but he added like some patches of different colors as well to make it look like it was repaired from the various uh, environmental damages that could consist in Nicaragua as well, which is really funny. Uh, right now, Iron Major is currently working on a surgical suite. Uh, I gave him some terrain that I had, which was the uh, Gallo Dark terrain, I believe. I believe it's the one, I forgot the name of the expansion is for the Gallo Dark terrain for a kill team, but it's the one that had a medical bay available for people to use. So we got some of those pieces. So he's making a medical bay now as we speak to create like a, like a rogue dock, for example. And our current joke is that we're going to put the meat market right next to the rogue dock shop. So that way it's kind of like, you know, we have good news and bad news about your friend. You know, and it's like, good news is, uh, bad news is your friend didn't make it. Good news, you get a 50% discount on the fresh meat market. You know, they're, <laughs> they're eating uh, their dead friend, you know, because it's Nicaragua, which is all kinds of craziness there. So yeah, this is the meat market. Just a lot of details involved in making this. It looks absolutely fantastic. 
It looks stunning, especially when we put this together with the shanties that we have for the village that we made with shipping containers and everything. We could actually make a little town and actually have like like gun like wild west shoot standoffs and things. So what I have to do now is get some uh, uh, some miniatures to be like civilians in Nicaragua. I have to get some outcast miniatures or something so that way I could use that as well to kind of populate this area. So now that we're going to talk about the Red Rocket Bar and Grill as well as the meat market, the last thing we're going to talk about real quick is the gun stall. All right, so the last terrain piece we're going to talk about is the gun stall, which is also a really well done and amazing looking piece of terrain. It looks absolutely fantastic. It looks much better than the weapons stall that you get from the uh, Games Workshop uh, terrain, in my opinion. So let's talk about its features real quick. So once again, we have this beautiful MDF board that we have uh, being built for the base, as well as this really cool looking deck that the Iron Major made using uh, some uh, insulation foam, as well as making some uh, popsicle stick decking over here. Once again, using the uh, corrugated cardboard to put around the outside of the stall. And as you can see, we have all these weapons, knives, and guns. And if you're wondering what these are from, that's actually from a bag of Lego guns made for Lego miniatures. According to Iron Major, he bought that from Amazon. And he had like a bunch of, I think he said he had like 40 or 50 pieces in that bag. And he just painted them up real quick to make them look like, you know, modern weapons. So we have like some M4s, some uh, pistols, some Desert Eagles and stuff, some AKs in the background as well. And as you can see, he also took these weapons and also wired them directly into the backing over here using that cross stitch grating to create the backing. And he painted those up as well. And he also created these awesome signs. No credit. I just love that part where it says the guns. So you got to buy them right off the bat. He also has some, uh, I forgot what he calls it, but it's used for cabinet work uh, to uh, create some structures on the framing and cabinetry work over here in the top. He had some uh, leftover pieces from a kitchen remodel that his, that his wife did. And he used that to create that superstructure there. And if we look here on the side, we see some more of that cool looking uh, pallet terrain that he made using some uh, wood, uh, some um, false, uh, some popsicle sticks to do that, as well as this wall here in the back. I just love how these guns are wired in to the back and make it look like it's open air. Kind of reminds me of the gun shops from Dogtown in Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty, if you ever played that game. That's what this kind of reminds me of. It looks really, really cool. And then here on the back on the wall here, once again, using cross stitch uh, grating. To create that and then of course if you look here this old piece of uh this old piece of uh of sprue that we use for the wire uh, for the framing of the wall and then of course you just kind of wired things in there painted it up put some more wanna posters on the outside rolston reciprocating repeater it's kind of cool and that just looks absolutely fantastic the detail that he put on this thing too i really love all the rubble as well I'm a big fan of rubble and battle damage and things of that nature i mean look at the wiring on these guns they put on there it looks like something you would see in fallout which looks really cool too and then of course he also did the roof again once again using paper straws to make the rods that the uh, market stall has the roof on and the roof you remember of course took uh, acrylic paint and water dye the paper towel just normal bounty paper towel and you just kind of put it on top of that let it form and dry then use wood uh, then use clear glue to make it uh, uh, more rigid and of course it's painted i like this little patch of color they put on there as well to make it look like it was uh you know repaired over time just a lot of little character interest like little interesting things like little stories like no credit like you can imagine like this gun style owner like maybe sold a piece to a ganger who never paid him back and the guy died or whatever but it looks absolutely fantastic as well just really cool and the fact that we have like these market stalls now with these different types of things just adds so much character terrain especially when you combine this with the shanty the shanty town that iron major made as well and we could combine it with these and some of the biodomes he has we'll talk about those in another video as well as some of the shipping containers and um, it just gonna look really cool but it's all said and done and once again he's also working on a rogue dock shop that he's working on right now and that's going to really kind of round up the whole, whole the whole thing it looks really cool he's also thinking about playing around the idea of making a corpse grinder real quick to make corpse starch uh, as part of the town, that's where they discreetly uh, get rid of people who don't uh, survive in this town. So it'd be kind of cool to see exactly what he comes up with. So there you guys go. This is pretty much our overview of Iron Major's beautifully made Nickermunda Marketplace train that he made. It looks absolutely fantastic. And at the same time, we saved a bunch of money not having to spend money to buy those market stalls and make something much cooler with a lot more detail that looks really amazing at exactly the same time. And as you see, Iron Major made these materials from some scraps that he had lying around, primarily styrofoam and cardboard, uh, paper straws, popsicle sticks, and just paint and time and patience. And he made a lot of amazing looking stuff. It just looks absolutely fantastic. I love this diamond plating. 
on that table. That just looks so cool. So yeah. So tell us what you guys think. Feel free to put comments, likes, and or subscribe. You guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all these greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this week, guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.